So I want to talk about Jordan Peterson a little bit more and some of the criticism he's gotten on MB and elsewhere. I saw on MB, Elf posted a, a thread, or no, an article in that thread that was criticizing Peterson. I thought it was very slanted and very ideologically driven. It seemed like it was a smear tactic to me. Um, pretty much every, well, a lot of what he said in the article was pretty dishonest in representing Jordan Peterson's point of view. Um, for instance, he said that there's a blurry line between Richard Spencer and Jordan Peterson when it really comes down to it. And that's just ridiculous. Jordan Peterson has admonished the alt-right, has called it white identitary, white identity politics, has called it counterproductive, has called it Nazism. Everything you can think of that the left says about alt-righters. Peterson has repeated most of that and condemned it. But he doesn't get credit for that because they see him, and increasingly they see anybody who speaks out against uh, leftist ideology as necessarily the enemy. And so uh, they don't make nuanced distinctions between guys like Jordan Peterson and Richard Spencer, which is extremely disingenuous because they're very different. It's, it's, it's similar to comparing Hillary Clinton to Stalin or even Lenin. It's like they're not the same. They're not the same. Uh, one of those is way more radical than the other. And uh, Peterson has never said anything that even remotely uh, supported white identitary politics. He's spoken out against it directly. And he doesn't support social Darwinism. He doesn't support the idea that other races belong lower on the social hierarchy because of biology, which is what social Darwinism actually was. Yet he gets called a social Darwinist because he, he proposes the idea that there might be a biological reasoning behind the uh, hierarchical structures in human societies. And this is basically a naturalistic fallacy to say that he's supporting domination or hierarchy because he's pointing to a, a possible cause. So uh, it's like saying that if you point to the evolutionary logic behind racism as having something to do with tribalism, then you're making an argument in favor of racism, whereas you're not making a justification. You're just citing a possible cause. It doesn't make racism okay, and but people don't don't draw that kind of nuanced distinction, and that's where they get into the they fall into the trap of uh, conflating people like Spencer with people like. Peterson. So, um, that's my basic thoughts on that. He's not an alt writer, and uh, his his views on on social hierarchies and human beings is pretty coherent. You can you can disagree with it, but you should do so by picking apart the logic, not using weaponized stigma, which is primarily what his opponents seem to do. They just try to stigmatize it, try to make it so taboo that it shuts down the possibility of a debate. That's what Kathy Newman was doing the entire time on that interview. She was just trying to repeat what Peterson said in a much more inflammatory way. And she was she was stretching the logic to the sense to the extent that it no longer really resembled the, the spirit of what he was saying. Like he would say that he thinks there's more to just gender there's more than just gender to the gender pay gap he thinks that a multivariate analysis indicates that it's not just down to the sexual oppression and this gets conflated with the idea that just uh men deserve to dominate women that, we, that it's a necessary part of capitalism and women should just deal with it and that's not what he said and that's what the article says that he said and um more more specifically he was when he said that when, when he was uh objecting to what she was saying he was just trying to point out to her that uh you know the, those those statistics that she was using basically take the aggregate income of men in a country and compare it to the aggregate income of women in a country when divided per capita so that doesn't actually test for what the cause of the discrepancy is because men and women can be working different jobs on average they can be working different hours etc they go into different fields and uh, one of them might be more uh, consistently uh, pursuing the, the career-oriented lifestyle than the other because women, on average, end up having to make a sort of sacrifice when it comes down to the fact that, that there's a family. If they want a family, they have to, uh, you know, they have to raise the kids somehow. And a lot of time, it's the woman who sacrifices part of her career to do this rather than the man and there is a sort of uh, 
evolutionary logic to this. This sort of does correspond to the way human beings have always existed, especially in the tribal context. And it, so, so once, more, once again, to be clear, the, the author paints it as if Jordan Peterson is talking about human beings as if they're lobsters and just uh, points how absurd that is and, and leaves it at that. He acts like the lobster example is the only example, and it's not. It's just one of the most primordial examples that Peterson can draw upon that even remotely uh, corresponds to, to the way that human beings function. It's an analogy. It's not saying that we're exactly the same. And he talks about specifically uh, the, the logic behind the way that human tribes manifest. If you want to see that, go to his second interview with, with Joe Rogan. He speaks about it in detail about the social norms and the social pressures that human beings exist on, exert on one another and how they make sense when viewed from a point of view of a tribal context in which we evolved. So his views are much more nuanced than his enemies give him credit for. And ultimately, I think that is why I fundamentally don't trust them. I fundamentally think this guy's an ideologue. He's trying to smear Peterson as best he can. I don't think that he's naive. I don't think that he's misinformed. Uh, because the smears are too consistent on every single issue. He painted Peterson's position as worse than it actually was. He says Peterson refuses to uh, respect the, uh, the decisions of transgender people and their pronouns. Whereas the real controversy was he had, a, he had a beef with the fact that they were writing it into law that you were compelled to, to speak a certain way about transgender people regarding their pronouns. And that's kind of uh, crazy when you think about it. That's, but it goes against the notion of free speech. And that's why she got so tripped up when she asked him, what makes you think your free speech trumps the right of somebody else not to be offended? It was an absurd question to ask. And that's why it was so easy for him to trip her up with his answer. And if you don't think that she lost ground in the debate by asking that question, then uh, I would suggest you rewatch it because she clearly is at a loss of words after he gives her a very simple and coherent answer. Um, so, yeah. The, the, the one other thing I'll mention is the Vice interview. I thought he didn't come across well in that interview, especially the edited version that Vice aired, which was also clearly a hit piece. Um, clearly selected the clips that they thought would make him look the worst. And people would say, well, those are the most, the most interesting parts of the interview. That's why he selected it. No, because I watched the, the full unedited interview and there was more interesting stuff being said in some of the unedited parts than there was in the, in the parts that they strung together as their little propaganda piece. Um, but in any case, I thought even in the full unedited version, he didn't come across well. He seemed clearly agitated and I thought he lost some ground with that, with that interview. And I thought the Vice interviewer was a lot more reasonable than Kathy Newman was. Um, although he was also clearly digging for sound bites, it's sort of what these reporters tend to do. Um, but in any case, I thought Peterson really slipped up when he said that a woman who wears makeup and expects not to be harassed is being hypocritical, even though the guy led him into saying that. He, Peterson didn't just come right out and say that. The guy coaxed him into saying it. He said, so you're saying, he, he built upon the logic. He's like, so what you're saying is that, and then finally Peterson, yeah, said, yeah, I guess so. Um, and he slipped up because I don't think that's hypocritical to wear makeup and not expect to be harassed. I think it's, but it is reasonable for him to ask the question, should they wear makeup in the workplace if we're trying to desexualize the workplace? And I think it is being in denial and being sort of naive to suggest that makeup has nothing to do with sexuality, that, it, that women don't wear makeup to look sexy. The, the, that's why it developed. Now, you can say I don't wear makeup to look sexy just like you can say I don't wear lingerie to look sexy. But there's a sexual element to it. And he agreed that we shouldn't let people wear lingerie in the workplace. So it is a legitimate question to ask exactly where the line should be drawn. I'm not saying the line should be drawn at women not being able to wear makeup. But it's a, at least a reasonable line of questioning to pursue just for the purpose of trying to emphasize exactly how blurry uh, that line actually is, but I'll wrap it up there. Yeah. Um, people, it, it, all I'll say is try to, uh, 
try to hear out what your opponent is saying a little bit more. Because I tried to hear out what that what the guy in the article was saying. I really did. But when I saw him saying that Kathy Newman, despite being uh, reasonably polite, was subjected to a misogynist backlash, immediately I could tell this guy was ideologically driven. If you, anybody who hasn't seen the interview or anybody who has seen the interview and, and agrees with that analysis, please rewatch it and tell me that you actually think she's being cordial and and. Uh, agreeable she even says at the end of the interview when he says you're actually being very disagreeable during this interview uh she says well i'm glad i put you on the spot she admits that she's being adversarial and there's no reason why she shouldn't be adversarial but but to say that she wasn't is is pure nonsense and uh the backlash that she was subjected to and i'm not saying that there were no uh guys that sent her some misogynist shit because there probably were it's the internet you're gonna get all sorts of fucking stupid shit whenever you post something on the internet you get a bunch of attention you're gonna get a bunch of abuse from a bunch of fucking lunatics but the bottom line especially if it's politicized but the bottom line is uh there's also a legitimate criticism of the way that she conducted herself in that interview which the author ignored which was that she was being intellectually dishonest and trying to misrepresent peterson's views again and again and again that's why the meme is so what you're saying is because she would say what he what he was saying was something way more inflammatory than what he was actually trying to say she wasn't looking to to hear his point of view out she was only looking to re-represent it in the most taboo and inflammatory way so as to shut down the prospect of debate and make people shy away from even hearing out what he had to say in the first place and that's what ultimately that's what a lot of these leftists want to do they do not want competition in the in the realm of political rhetoric they, they use weaponized stigma in order to shut down their opponents not logic not ra not rationality not reason weaponized stigma oh this guy's a racist this guy's a misogynist this guy's this and this and this and it's not that people are never racist we said that about richard spencer you have a point it's that they say it about anybody that disagrees with them. That's where the, the real problem lies.